back. How you doing? This is Mike for Mike's Random Thoughts. Hey, I know it's been a minute since I've done an episode. I thought it was about time I hopped on here and let you guys know exactly what's going on. So one issue that's going on, I'm not going to announce <clears throat> publicly, you know, as in the sense of uh, everybody that can see it. I'm not going to announce that that's going on, but <clears throat> I'm working on fixing that issue. Now, at any rate, for my long-term listeners, they know that I moved into kind of an older house and I've been having a lot of projects off and on that's been kind of causing me to put focus solely on that well those projects are coming to an end um i'm finally getting to the point to where i'm looking at maybe two three weeks left of projects and those are going to be wiped out done and i can move forward onto the next direction of stuff i want to do <clears throat> now that's enough about me personally so let's get into the aspect of the show so <clears throat> what's going on is a lot you we're looking at kyle rittenhouse's trial off and on i've been i've been paying very close attention to it Mainly because of the fact that one, I feel it's a distraction case, and two, I feel like it's a misled case. They want you to go on the assumption that this case is solely about Kyle Rittenhouse and the protesters. It's not. If you actually have watched the court case, they've already brought up the prosecutor the other day was bringing up Biden's gun talking points pro bono. Like I'm talking just to the point. Like literally from rubber bullets to bullet size to barrel size to ammunition, he brought it all up. Everything Biden said about guns, he brought up in that trial. At that point, it became obvious to me that this court case is about our Second Amendment rights and our right to be able to protect ourselves as well. And that's why they're putting so much emphasis on guns. Why did I earlier, why did I say it was a distraction case? There's two other cases going on right now. We got the Audrey case going on. And if you want a real white supremacist case, that's the case you're going to want to look at. In my personal opinion, that guy is a straight up white racist. Okay, I'm just going to lay it out there. He straight up admitted in trial yesterday. I was reading some of the transcripts and he literally said, no, the gentleman did not have a firearm. And no, he was actually trying to run at the time that I shot him. That's a straight up case for what they're trying to put on Kyle. That's been going on at the same time as the Kyle Rittenhouse case has been going on. But all you're hearing about is Kyle Rittenhouse. Now, the other case going on that they don't want you talking about, I tested this theory today, is the Maxine Waters case. Why did I say I tested it? Well, I did what everybody does. <clears throat> I went into comment threads and I tried to show people the actual news articles that's reporting about the Maxine Waters slash Epstein case. And literally about 
four minutes into it, Facebook tried to ban me from commenting into those threads. So they're trying to block people from talking about the Maxine Waters case already. And it just is just really weird to me that the whole world, not just the United States, thinks Kyle Rittenhouse is innocent, but yet they're holding up the case. Now they're saying it's because of different jury members that are hung up because they're worried about the public outlash. Anybody with common sense that's in a true crime community that's been covering different court cases or different, uh, different criminal aspects in true crime, anybody with a basic understanding of it knows that it doesn't matter which way this case goes. Whether you find him guilty of lesser charges, you're going to have an upset backlash. Whether you find him innocent and let him go, you're going to have an upset backlash. No matter what verdict they deliver, there's going to be an upset backlash from some whichever side of the community it's going to be. It doesn't matter what it's going to be. There's going to be an angry outburst on one of those sides, and they know it. So the fact they're using it as an excuse is interesting to me. Now, however, we're going to let this ride out because we don't have no other choice. However, yesterday, the uh, NBPP, or the New Black Panther Party, they showed up in front of the courthouse. Well, naturally, we're already hearing reports. I mean, like way before this court case got going, you had George Floyd's cousin release a video across social media literally asking people to let him know or his family know or BLM members know of any information about jurors, and I quote, because they got effing cameras in that room. And his girlfriend goes, yeah, they got effing cameras in there. So they've been looking for information. Then you had CNBC yesterday literally get banned from the courthouse. Why? Because they were doing what they asked them to do. They were following the jurors' bus home. The, the reporter was following their bus back to the disclosed location where they're supposed to go basically trying to take pictures of them, film them, and dox them. That's literally what the left has been demanding. That's what they try to accomplish there. I also think that this is a bigger play too, because I think a lot of this is a globalist funded movement. Now, a lot of people say that's a conspiracy theory. I'm planning on doing episodes about that, explaining why and showing proof of why I think that's going on, because there is a link. You know, everything's like a chain and a chain has links. It may be a loose link, but a chain has links. So it's all connected somehow. And that's what I'm trying to say. So the Kyle Rittenhouse case to me, I think he's innocent. Let me say that straight up. I think he's innocent. It's a case of self-defense. First off, you had the person that is in question <clears throat> that got killed. One was a woman beater who had ties to the Antifa community. It was a long rap sheet of violence. You had another guy that was a convicted pedophile, not once, but more than two times as well as a wanted felon who was part of Antifa and, or not wanted felon, but had a, had a, he was on parole or probation and also had a firearm on hand. Now this certain individual hit him over the back of the head with a skateboard. Now anybody with common sense, any of the basic medical knowledge knows that's called blunt force trauma. What he tried to do was kill him by the skateboard because Antifa is big on what they consider easy to get weapons <clears throat> flashlights batteries socks with things in them bats skateboards anything that you could find around your yard but you got to understand something that these tactics date way back into the 40s okay so back in the 40s the people were so controlled by fascists that they didn't have money to go get guns so all they were able to fight with was their was the weapons that they could get a hold of or weapons they can manufacture, or weapons they just make do and turn them into weapons. And that's what they're trying to do. I think that's why they're trying to go after the gun right so much personally. Now, I also think that this case, <clears throat> they're not talking much about the Audrey case because the Audrey case, let me tell you something. When BLM showed up at the Kenosha courthouse, I'm like, what are they doing there? They should be at the Audrey case. The Audrey case, that's a real racist. Like I said, he flat out said, I shot him while he was running unarmed, along with some other choice words. That's a real racist case, but they don't want you talking about that because that can't have implications to guns and that can't have implications to the BLM. That can't have explanation to this narrative that they're trying to put out globally. Okay. So that's why they're fixated on that, because on top of the Audrey case, like I said, you have the Maxine Waters case going on, too, and they don't want you talking about that one. Try it out for yourself. See if I'm lying. They don't want you talking about that one. You're going to get censored a lot. 
Maybe not right away, but eventually you will, trust me. Talk about it, see what I'm talking about. <clears throat> they don't want you talking about that one, and the reason why they don't want you talking about that one is that one has to do with the rich elite. That one has to do with royalty, elite bankers, corporate CEOs, Hollywood celebrities, Hollywood CEOs, literally the big league players. That Maxine Waters case, that case could bring out so much ugly truth of so many people, and that's why they don't want you talking about it. I guarantee you they're going to try to censor this one as much. If there's any case that should have open cameras, it's the Maxine Waters case. If that's the case that America needs to stream, that's the case that the whole globe needs to see streamed. Okay, that is a huge case. This case has so much massive, massive implications in it of people going down. You got to understand these people aren't like, these aren't like a rapper, okay? These are the people that own the freaking rapper that could be implicated in this case. We're not talking about an actor. We're talking about the people that own Disney Studios, that own Universal Studios, that own Citibank, that own Wall Street's bank, that are royalty, that are oil field CEOs. That's why that case is so important to focus on. Okay, so I do plan on looking, as you can tell by the way I said it, I do plan on looking into that case. I've been following the Epstein case from Jump Street off and on. I've even tried to put stuff on this channel and Google has slapped, has slapped that completely down. They will not let me put stuff on it. So I'm gonna try to do it anyways. I've been trying to figure out a way to do it. Uh, believe it or not, there was a couple things I tried to put on this channel in the past uh, week or so that has already been to where they were not gonna let me put it on there. So I've been dealing with that on the back burner as well. Um, the other thing I've been doing is trying to rebrand the show to the direction I wanna go to. I've been doing a lot of politics for a while. I mean, when I say politics, understand that even blogging, meaning typing different things here and there on social media, I've been involved in some sort, some shape, form, or way in fixation on politics since Obama first ran, okay? Um, and really, I wanna say it started with the Bush, uh, the Bush Jr. administration, honestly. Uh, it was back when Bin Laden and all that was going on that I got started and fixated on politics and I just never stopped. It just grew stronger and stronger and stronger. Um, so I'm not going to say straight off 10 minutes in, hey, I'm going to quit covering on politics. I'm not. I'm still going to do episodes on social movements off and on. I'm just not going to make it the number one priority of this channel. It's not going to be like every single other episode is going to deal with BLM, the Black Panthers, Republican, Democrat, this person or that person. Um, I've been doing that for too long. So I'm going to start going, bringing the show back into the original, uh, what I wanted to be back when it used to be called Working Class Thoughts, uh, was the original name of this show, was Working Class Thoughts. And if you uh, look into some of the episodes I did underneath that name, you'll quickly understand uh, the direction of the show that I'm trying to get it back to. That should be exciting news to the people in the true crime community that I've grown accustomed to, as well as gained tremendous friendships with. Um, we're going to be looking into different cases, understand that these aren't going to be normal cases. Um, I'm not talking about a uh, Bundy case. I'm not going to be talking about um, the benders. Um, I'm going to be going at their different angles. And that's what I'm planning on bringing to the table here pretty soon on this platform. Um, I'm going to try to bring it into the bigger issues. See, we've talked a, we talked a lot about politics and we've learned a lot. If you've been paying attention to these uh, to this channel and the episodes I've done, then you already understand who's funding BLM. You already know who's funding the Black Panthers. You already know who's funding NFACC. You already know who's funding Antifa. You already know the key players, why they're there, who's doing it globally, why they're connected, why you're seeing them in Ireland, why you're seeing them in the, all these weird countries. We've already talked about it. We passed it out to the point to where we're blue in the face. We already know. So let's move on from that, and we're going to go into a different direction. Now, am I saying that you're not going to see anything from me about talk? No, of course not. I'm not saying that. If you pay attention to my Facebook blog, uh, which is underneath Mike's Random Thoughts, the show name, that's where you're going to see the news articles. Now, saying that, I'm doing the algorithm game. Okay? So what that means is they've been trying to censor my account to the point to where for the past three years, I've had censorship on my account, and I can't shake it. 
um, they lifted it one time and it was a matter of like 25 minutes later from a post from like a year before that it got re-censored so I've been dealing with that off and on so if you're not seeing stuff go look at it it's there and chances are whatever you're wanting to see um, you're gonna find it on there I'm constantly posting articles on there, everything from court cases to true crime to uh, social movements to environmental to random, just completely random subjects. I did one not too long ago uh, about an animal. That's what I'm saying. Like, you never know what to expect, but you can find what you're looking for on there. I guarantee you it. Um, if you go into the other show blog, which is underneath Working Class Thoughts, you're going to find news articles there as well. I'm having to go back and forth right now because they're trying to censor me so much. So I'm having to go like this. In fact, the censorship and uh, suppression has gotten to the point to where on my Instagram account, I've had to create multiple Instagram accounts. Now, there's a lot of reasons why I decided to do this. And this has not been an easy task. This has been a very tedious task and uh, wanting to bang your head into the wall kind of task. However, it's a, um, it's a way to answer a lot of different problems. Uh, a while back, people were saying, dude, I feel overwhelmed. You cover so much on your show, so many different subjects that it's just like bam, bam, bam. So what I did was I fixed a major problem. You know, I fixed the main show account and then I created multiple other Instagram accounts for subject-based matters. So if you're a health nut and you're into natural food, this show platform has an Instagram account for you. If you're into food and cooking, this show has a plat on uh, Instagram. There's an account that you can see that's about that. If it's news, social movements, wars, uh, China, uh, banking, uh, save the children, anything like that, there's an Instagram account linked to the show name for that as well. So on and so on and so on there's uh one for motivation and jokes so on there's one for religious so if you follow me and follow the show for different reasons that's the reason why i did that so that everybody that listens to the show for certain reasons they could actually go okay so he is thinking about this so you know there's something there for you and that's how you can find it you can find it on uh, instagram so that's instagram is the way that you can catch this show for different areas and what I mean is when I earlier when I said, what direction am I going to take the show? Chances are you're going to see a, uh, a thought process happening on Instagram. You're going to see a switch over and that's where you're going to see. And you're going to see it through those accounts, whether you follow that a certain account for this or that. You're going to see, oh, he's gearing up to do an episode about this because he's on he's he's on this one a lot. OK, and that's why I did it. So people can see what's going on. They can anticipate what's going on. They can follow me for whatever subject they want to uh, follow me for. And they don't get overwhelmed at the same time. Now, saying that, you can also find the show. Hold on. You can also find the show on Twitter. Where on Twitter, I post news articles. I reply to other people. I do everything that everybody else does on Twitter. You can find all kinds of information on my Twitter page really fast. Uh, Twitter is something I use to just get it out there as fast as I can. So you're going to find a lot on there as well. Um, Snapchat, I used to have it. I deleted it because it just sat there and took up room on my phone. And frankly, I'm not a high school kid. Um, to me, Snapchat is nothing more than a high school kid app. It's an app that's used by people that want to commit adultery and don't want to get caught for it. Or it's an app for drug dealers or kids. Kids love Snapchat and TikTok and all that crap. They do. They eat it up. However, when you're past a certain age, what are you on there for? You get what I'm saying? Like, I understand the principle of if you have a show and you're doing like, hey, this is going on, or you have a dispensary or something like that. But I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. Majority of adults that have Snapchat are doing it because they delete the chats after so long. You know what I mean? Now, you can, you can gain those chat records if you look hard enough, but overall... Yeah. So that's why I took it off the of Snapchat. I'm like, I don't use it. None of my listeners, I think, use it. Majority of my listeners, uh, when I pulled data the other day, like I said, I'm gearing up to bring back the show into a regular process. So I'm going to get to that in a minute. However, when I was going over data reports and pulling up the yearly reports and seeing listeners and responses and um, all that kind of stuff, and I was putting it all together, <clears throat> I forgot where I was going with that, but anyways. 
I oh, that's when I noticed that a lot of my age group and my listeners are primarily between the ages of 40 and 70 something. So I don't think many of them are on Snapchat. <laughs> you get what I'm saying? I don't I don't think they got time for it. So I took myself off of Snapchat. I didn't see a point for it. You know what I mean? It's really it just sat there and just took up room. So that's what I'm saying. Um, I am gearing up to bring back the show into a regular process. I've been hinting with my regular listeners. When I say regular listeners, it's kind of like a um, the the listeners that became friends. Like I actually got to know these people like extremely well. I consider them actual personal friends. And I've let them know uh, the time period I'm planning on bringing back the show fully. Um, if you don't see anything in December, you're definitely going to start seeing them bang out by January. Uh, saying that you can expect pop-ups like what this one is, um, me basically touching bases with everybody, uh, letting them know where my mind's going at right now and what I've been paying attention to, uh, seeing what you guys think about that. You know what I mean? Um, so, oh, and I'm about to start responding to all the comments and all that kind of stuff that I received. I'm back to talking to different people, um, trying to figure out who I'm going to bring up on the show and what episodes are going to be about. I'm in the process of thinking about what that's going to be about. I've actually reached out to about five or six different people and waiting to hear back feedback on whether or not they want to be on the show and if I do bring them on the show, what we're going to talk about. Now, a great portion of what we talked about for the past year has been the same stuff that every... Not guilty. All. Not guilty. All of them. Sorry. But I tried a while ago. Sorry, guys. Uh, what you just saw was I just now heard because I decided to record this. Kyle Rittenhouse is not guilty of all charges. So, like I said... <laughs> And now maybe we can move on to a bigger case like the Maxine Waters case, right? And like I said, if you're not paying attention to the Maxine Waters case, please, please start paying attention to that case. That case, you're going to expect a lot from me coming out. I'm going to do episodes on it. Um, in fact, for those that don't know, one of the newest episodes, on, uh, aside from my testimony, I am going to finish that one. Um, my testimony, though. For my uh, friends and listeners that aren't Christian, don't trip. Look at it like a life story, okay? Uh, look at it like my biography, because that's how I'm writing it out. I'm writing it out as, a, as though it's going to be a book. And that's why it's taking so long. And I'm basically going to read it to everybody when I finish it. So you guys got that looking forward to. That's still in the process of being worked on. I do have episodes coming. I actually have stuff um, on a separate device that's a total of three hours and 42 minutes long. And I'm trying to go through that. Sorry, the wind's picking up on me, guys. But I'm trying to go through that to see um, what parts I'm going to use. Uh, you can expect that one to come out here pretty soon. And that's going to be on, like, Save the Children and um, that kind of area. So you're going to see that coming out here pretty soon. It's going to be, I don't know if I'm just going to do a brief, a brief appearance on it and just release all the footage or if i'm gonna make it and turn it into an actual episode where it's for those that are new to the show when i start writing out my episodes uh, my viewers will tell people like it's not all common for me to break it up in parts because the episodes and with the bonus features included <laughs> the episodes could be somewhere between four to five hours long easily that was back when I was researching stuff, and that's what I'm saying. To my true crime listeners, Mike's coming back. I already have, like I said, on a separate device, I have three hours of footage that I'm getting ready to go through and chop down to make an episode out of. So you guys got that to look forward to. My biography, that one's being worked on, and that one's about to come out. So everybody knows where i'm going at with the direction of the show we're going to be going into a lot of different aspects um you could expect it to be somewhere in between the lines of x files conspiracy theories um religion and just off the wall topics there will be true crime there will be true crime um there's a local resident i need to reach out to this gentleman actually if you're watching i'm not going to say your name out of respect um, for I live in a small community. Um, I'm not going to say your name out of respect. He is a member of the um, Osage Nation. He has been requesting me to go to a certain place locally to do an episode on. I'm still in the works of trying to find somebody to uh, get me up there so I can get some footage. 
and we could turn that into an episode. So just know um, that I'm working on that. And this is a gentleman that works at one of the dispensaries I go to. Um, I only go to two dispensaries and he works at one of them. Um, when I come in every once in a while, himself and another gentleman, they've asked me to do a certain place called the Lamity Mansion. Um, it's a, uh, it's a very, it will definitely be a true crime episode like the earlier Mike, uh, Mike's random thoughts slash working class thoughts, true crime episodes. Um, the episodes that got me started, the episodes that got people that even like Charles Manson watching, uh, you guys can expect those type of episodes coming out. Like I said, <clears throat> I'm working on getting someone to actually basically have the balls to take me up there. Um, because locally, a lot of people don't like going up to the certain location. Because uh, rumor has it, a lot of people get shot when they try to go up there. Uh, they're very protective of the certain location. So I'm working on a way to figure out how I can get up there. That will be the first true crime episode that I'm going to do. And it's going to be an interesting one. It has to do with small towns. It has to do with money and some dark stuff and even darker stuff over the years since the place uh, burned down. And then you got urban legends on top of it. So it's going to be a good one. So I just basically laid it out for you guys, like two to three different episodes that you guys can expect coming your way. Also, I even told you guys there's five people I'm in the current currently trying to convince to come on a show. Why do I say trying to convince? Well, Mike's kind of got a bad reputation for being a hot button, you know, like pusher and, um, I got a hot temper when I get when I get flared up about something, but <laughs> that's another reason why I'm trying to <coughs> blog about politics and not talk about politics as much. Um, you know, fixing a lot of different issues. But anyways, so <laughs> expect them to hopefully come on. One of them's in California. One of them you guys have already seen. Um, he's in Australia. <coughs> However. I'm also going to try to convince another guy I know in Australia to come on. And there's another individual I'm going to try to convince to come on. And there's some local people I'm going to try to convince to come on. <coughs> and there's a surprise guest that a lot of people personally that have got to know me as a friend. And I'm talking a good friend. Firefly. Um, Dirty Water. Waterbug. Malice. Mayhem. Um, even, even stoner, everybody knows who she is, but nobody's ever seen her. It's been years. I've almost got her convinced to come on the show. Almost. So once I do, I almost got it. She's this close. She's this, this, this close. So once I do, you guys will finally meet her. Um, and that will be one of those special type of episodes. Like, you know, whenever I actually advertise it as a special, uh, special feature episode, it'll most likely be done live if I could convince her to do it. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to get a buddy of mine in on that to try to help me convince her to do it. That way everybody can finally, those that do know, know <laughs> what I'm talking about. So I got a lot of different things coming on to the show, just a lot of different directions. I'm going to go ahead and kill this, uh, kill this episode real quick and structure the bonus features but like i said kyle's innocent i told you he was now maybe we can move on to bigger cases like audrey and maxine waters this has been mike for mike's random thoughts peace love and good vibes everybody if this is kind of rocky i apologize bear with me looking at myself uh filming myself again i could kind of feel the energy coming back i was worried about that um Stoner, I doubt you'll watch, but if you do, a long time ago, you tell me, Mike, whatever you do, if you ever lay down a microphone, just know it's hard to come back. I see what you're talking about, man. You said that to me about like two years ago. But at any rate, I'm coming back. I got my energy back. I got my mind back. Um, my personal friends that listen to the show, you guys know I've been talking about getting my health, getting my mind and getting my body right before I come back. I've been talking about getting the house done before I come back. The house is almost done. I've been working out for uh, around a month now, trying to get my body right. I've been doing a lot of meditation, uh, my version of meditation, and my mind's finally starting coming back. Um, <clears throat> everything's getting fixed, man. I don't like to air out my health issues, um, but just know that <clears throat> I've had a lot of personal health issues going on, and um, I'm finally getting those dealt with. 
and I'm finally getting those fixed. So Mike's random thoughts slash working class thoughts because you guys can't expect me posting on both of those names uh, because of the suppression and what I anticipate the suppression to come after this after this gets completed and loaded up. I'm, I'm, I'm anticipating the suppression tactics to come even farther. So this is going to be a fun one. But anyway, once we figure all that out, like I said, time is ticking. And I've already released a statement on what, what's the latest date you guys can expect. It's only a couple weeks away. Time flies by. I mean, in no time, we're going to be at Thanksgiving, man. Think about that. Did you think about that? We're going to be at Thanksgiving here pretty soon, man. Time is flying by. It seems like every single day it's just going by faster. I keep asking myself, like, I swear, it was just Halloween yesterday. How the hell did we get up to talking about what's for Thanksgiving? But hey, such as life is, right? Anyways, I just expect me to come back. You guys can expect a, a much different but a much better uh, show. I'm hoping you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. I'm, ch I'm trying to get my energy back. It's almost fully back. By the next one, you'll see it completely back. Um, anyways, this has been Mike from Mike's Random Thoughts slash Working Class Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody have a good, uh, good day. And be safe out there. No matter what you do, be safe. And I don't care what you do. Believe in yourself. Have faith in yourself. Execute what you need to do. Because these times are going by real fast. Again, Mike from Mike's Random Thoughts. Peace, love, and good vibes. Everybody have a good night. The defendant will rise and face the jury and hearken to its verdicts. State of Wisconsin versus Kyle Rittenhouse. As to the first count of the information, Joseph Rosenbaum, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the second count of the information, Richard McGinnis, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the third count of the information, unknown male, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the fourth count of the information, Anthony Huber, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, not guilty. As to the fifth count of the information, Gage Grosskreutz, we, the jury, find the defendant, Kyle H. Rittenhouse, Kyle H. Rittenhouse not guilty. Members of the I... Well, I don't, you know, he, if you are authoritarian, you have to have a system in supporting you. You cannot just be authoritarian by yourself. But uh, certainly in United States, with today's uh, condition, you can easily have an authoritarian. In many ways, you're already in the authoritarian state. You just don't know it. How so? Many things happens today in U.S. This can be compared to cultural revol revolution in China. Like what? Like people trying to be unified in certain political correctness. That is very dangerous.